Good morning and welcome to our virtual service for this, the second Sunday in October. We are so glad to have you to join us this morning as we worship and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father and God the Holy Ghost. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. before you this morning first to say thank you Lord that you allowed us another day Father because you didn't have to do it to say thank you Lord how you kept us all last week Father woke us up early this morning Father and allowed us to press our way up once again to worship and praise your holy name you said Lord that you ought to be worshipped in spirit and truth Father so we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to help us this day Lord we thank you, Father God, for our pastor, Reverend Dukes, Lord, how you would use him as the vessel to speak on your behalf today, Lord. Anoint him anew, Lord, and give him the grace that he'll need, Father, to bring your word this day. Use those, Lord, who will sing, and use those who will play the organ this day. Use those, Lord, who will praise your holy name, Father. Lord, everybody, under the sound of my voice, we need something from you, Lord. We need a blessing, Father. It's our prayer, Father God, that you will give what's needed this day, Lord. Bless this service, Lord, and everybody who partakes of it, Father. We ask you to have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
kindly join me at this time as we repeat our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. virtual services. And just as God is using this ministry to be a spiritual blessing to you, we hope and we trust that you will allow God to use you to be a material blessing for the furtherance of this ministry. You see before you the ways that you can give. If you download the Givelify app, Look for Fountain Spring Baptist Church. Make sure you have the address of 2011 Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York. Or as I have been saying, there are several Fountain Spring Baptist churches in our country. Or if you choose not to give that way, you can always mail a check or a money order payable to Fountain Spring Baptist Church, post office box, 644 Osley, New York, 10502. Always remember that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
foundation is Jesus Christ the Lord. This is a very special day in the life of the Fountain Spring Baptist Church We're on this second Sunday in October we as a body of Christ are blessed to celebrate our 80th church anniversary. Amen. Amen. We thank God for blessing us and for all those who have come this way during these past 80 years. As I often tell the members of our church, there are others who have sat where you now sit. And a few more sunrises, a few more sunsets, and there will be those who will now occupy the seats that we now sit in. And so once again, happy 80th anniversary Amen. to all Amen. the disciples Amen. and members of the Fountain Spring Baptist Church. Amen. Seeing it as how this is our anniversary, I have been led uh, to preach from the 16th chapter, the Gospel according to St. Matthew. 16th chapter of Matthew, the 17th and the 18th verse, you will find these words. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, this is once again, that we, your children, your sons, and your daughters come before you as humbly as we know how. We come, Father God, thanking you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. We thank you, Father God, that you have chosen to reveal yourself to us in the person of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We don't take that for granted, oh God, because we realize that there are so many thousands upon thousands who do not know you in the pardon of their sins. And so once again, we say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this, our 80th anniversary as workers in your vineyard. And now, Lord, we ask that you will have your own way. Oh, yes, Lord, have your own way. For truly thou art the potter, and we are the clay. And now, may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We want to talk for the next little while on the subject, hell can't win. Hell can't win. Jesus, in this 16th chapter of Matthew, comes to a place called Caesarea Philippi. When he gets there, he raises a question to his disciples. He asks them, whom do men say that the Son of Man is? They begin to answer him. They say that some say you're John the Baptist. Some say that you're Elias. And some say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus then turns to them and he raises the question that we each must answer. But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter calls out as he usually does and he answers our Lord by saying thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus responds to him saying the words that we use for our text found in the 17th and 18th verse. But for this moment, we want to focus on what he says in this 18th verse. He declares, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, I say to you that hell can't win. Yes, when he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, he's not saying that he and his church are on the defense. No, he's saying that he and his followers, his church, are on the offense. In fact, he's saying that we are now at the very gates of hell. And as we enter, they shall not prevail against us. I tell you, hell can't win. Go ahead. All right. Well, Go ahead. Go ahead. how do we know that hell can't win? Well, I don't know about you, but I've searched the scriptures. Yes. And it seems like almost every place I go, mm -hmm. there is evidence in the scriptures, his word, that hell can't win. Yes. That's right. yes. It started out, to give you a few examples, mm -hmm. it started out in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. after mankind had disobeyed God. When God came walking in the garden, in the third chapter of Genesis, it says that Adam and Eve went and hid themselves and they tried to show fig leaves together to hide their nakedness. When the Lord questioned them to see what had happened, finally Eve says that the serpent beguiled me and tempted me to eat of that tree that you commanded me not to eat. The Lord God turned to that serpent and after bringing judgment on him, he said something very interesting. For God said that I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It, referring to the woman's seed, shall bruise 
thy head, and you shall bruise the heel of the woman's seed. In other words, my brothers and sisters, God is setting the parameters for this battle that begins in the beginning of time. And we'll go through all of the history of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we'll conclude at the end of time. But I stopped by to let you know yeah. that hell can't win. Yeah. God says that the seed of the woman will bruise the seed of the serpent. Hey, in other words, the blow to the serpent seed head is a mortal wound, a deadly wound. Yes. But the seed of the serpent will from time to time bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, something that is not life-threatening. So God declares early on in Genesis that hell can't win. We go on and we leave Genesis and we go down to Exodus. We find in Exodus that God's people, the children of Israel, have been enslaved in Egypt for over 400 years. When God gets ready, he sends them a deliverer. A man by the name of Moses. You know the story. God says to Moses, go back down into Egypt. And tell old Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. Moses did as he was commanded to do. And yet Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go. No, it took ten plagues for Pharaoh's heart to be changed to the extent that he would let God's people go. And it wasn't after that last plague when God sent the death angel that Pharaoh was so broken that he told Moses to take everything, take his people, and get out of Egypt. And so Moses and the children of Israel left Egypt. And on their journey, they came to the Red Sea. And while they were waiting at the Red Sea, Pharaoh had a change of heart. He decided that he was going to go after these Jews. And so he summons all of his men, their horses, and their chariots. And they pursued after Moses and the children of Israel. They found them when they were at the Red Sea. The story is told that Moses had the back, his back toward the Red Sea with mountains on either side and Pharaoh's army chasing him down. At that point, God spoke to Moses and said, I want you to tell my people something. And Moses told the people what was recorded in Exodus chapter 14. For he said, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. I tell you my brothers and sisters, hell just can't win. If that's not enough, as I peruse through this book called the Bible and look for other examples of how this thing is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. I run across a passage of scripture that is found in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Yes. In that chapter, there's a king by the name of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. king of Judah. Okay. He gets a message one day that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon have formed a league together and they are on their way to battle 
and fight against Judah. Jehoshaphat quickly reasons within himself that there are more of them than there are of his people. That's right. mm -hmm. And so in distress, when he has nobody else to turn to, he turns to God in prayer. Yes. He acknowledges who God is. Right. He says that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes. Yes. Not only does he acknowledge who God is, but he reminds God of his relationship with his people, the children of Israel. Right. And then he even goes so far as to say to God, when we could have destroyed the Moabites and the Amorites, you wouldn't let us do it. You told us during the time of Moses to pass by on the other side. And now look what they're up to. They're coming with all of their forces to battle against us and to destroy us. And God, we have no strength against such a great multitude. About that time, God got into the spirit of one of the men that were in Jehoshaphat's company. And God spoke through this man. God said to Jehoshaphat and to the people, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it's God. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, on this anniversary, I stopped by to let you know that hell can't win. But that's not enough. We see that the psalmist got into this also. For the psalmist realized that we will all have troubling times and enemies during our lifetime. And he said in the 37th Psalm, yes. he declared, fret not thyselves because of evil doing. Yes. Yes. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. The psalmist would have you to know that hell can't win. And then my brothers and sisters, as we turn our pages to the New Testament, yes. we see that one comes down to the banks of the Jordan. Yes. And John the Baptist declares to those around him, behold the Lamb of God yes. which taketh away the sins of the world. Yes. After he's baptized by John, the Bible declares that he goes immediately into the wilderness right. where he stays for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of that period, he is tempted three times by old Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan trying to bruise his heel. Right. But at the end of that period, Jesus comes out of the wilderness and one of the first things that he does according to Luke chapter 4 he goes into the synagogue he sits down and it came his time to read the Bible said that he took the scroll from the prophet Isaiah and he found the place in that scroll where it declared that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. I want to focus in on the fact that in this his trial sermon he declares that God has sent him to preach deliverance to the captives. 
to those who are bound. Kind of reminds us of that picture of the children of Israel back in Egypt. When God sent a man by the name of Moses, a type of Jesus Christ, told Moses to go down and deliver my people from Egypt. Which also was a type of hell itself. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, hell just can't win. And so Jesus said that that was his assignment. To preach deliverance to the captives. Well, how is he going to do that, brother pastor? Well, on another occasion, Jesus said, and it is recorded for us in Matthew chapter 12. Verse 29, he says something very strange. He says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? He first must bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his goods. Let me see if we can take that apart for you. Just for a minute or so. How can one enter into a strong man's house? That strong man that Jesus is referring to is Satan himself. His house is hell. His goods are people. So Jesus is raising the question. How can you go into Satan's territory? Into hell itself. And deliver his goods and take them out unless you first bind that strong man and then you can spoil his house. Well, my brothers and sisters, it was at Calvary that yeah. my Lord and your Lord, my Savior and your Savior, he bound that strong man who had been strong for a mighty long time. You see my brothers and sisters. Satan plotted. Against our Lord. And Satan thought. He finally had. It. He tried to get him ever since the beginning. Of human time. And even when Jesus was born. Satan got into Herod. And caused Herod to put all. Of the male children to death. Hoping that among them would be this new babe that the wise men spoke to him about when they said to Herod, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star, and we have come to worship him. Ever since that time, Satan was plotting and scheming to take Jesus down. If he couldn't get him one way, he tried to get him another way. Yeah, yeah. Finally, he thought he had him when he got into Judas. And Judas betrayed my Lord and your Lord. And they arrested him in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says he went from judgment hall to judgment hall. And finally, the next morning, they put an old rugged cross on his shoulder. Let him out to a place called Calvary. Yeah. There they hung him between the heavens and the earth. And between two thieves. Yeah. Yeah. Satan said, yes, I got him now. It won't be long before he dies on that cross. And when he died, they took him down and put him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. Yeah. We say borrowed. Because he didn't plan to stay there too long. Because hell just can't win. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed in that grave all day Saturday. He stayed in that grave all night Saturday night. And about this time, I would imagine that death and Satan says to the grave, do you have him? And the grave says, yes, I got him. Yeah. 
And once I got him, he ain't going to get loose. But I got news for you. My Bible says, before sunrise on Sunday morning, the sun got up. Well, let me tell you that again. Before sunrise on Sunday morning, the sun of God got up. When he got up, he declared, I got all power in heaven and earth. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, hell can't win. And if that's not enough, when we get to the book of Romans, after his ascension back to heaven, the book of Romans lets us know in the 8th chapter that nay, in all these things, in all that God had talked about through his servant Paul throughout the book of Romans, throughout this 8th chapter, he declares nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We ain't just conquerors. We ain't just winners. We're not just victorious, but we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Well, I got to bring this to a conclusion, but I want to let you know that just as the third chapter of Genesis told us about the parameters of the war and the battle that would exist through human time between God and Satan, between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. When you get to the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation, God has John the Revelator declare in that 14th verse, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In that very next chapter, God starts off all over again. But John declares, I looked and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the bride coming down out of heaven. I tell you, my brothers, from one end of this book to the other, God gives us many examples of why we ought to have the confidence that hell can't win. And because hell can't win, because in Jesus we have the victory, can't nothing do us any harm. Oh, yes, it may upset us. A little while. But you got to always remember that God got your back. And if God got your back, he's more than the whole world against you. I tell you, hell can't win. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that. I'm glad to remind myself and to let God's word remind me when I get this in despair, when I get distressed. When all this stuff is going around all over this nation, when we're faced with disease from one end to the other, when we're faced with all this corruption in our political system, when we're bogged down for all these diseases, when we find trouble on every hand and enemies trying to pull us down, I got news for you. I steal away and I go to God in prayer. Why do I go him? Because he'll remind me that hell just can't win. Oh, hallelujah. Hell can't win. We come through 80 years at a church, and even though hell tried to pull us down, hell just can't win. Because this church is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. On Christ the solid rock will stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And never forget, I don't care what it is that the devil throws against you. Hell just can't win. It may slow you down for a little while. But that's alright. Because my Bible tells me that the sex 
of a good man are yes. ordered yes. by the Lord. Yes. Oh, yes, you may have to go through some water every now and then. Yes. You may have to even go through the fire. Yes. But he promised that you wouldn't go through it all by yourself. Yes. He said, I'll be with you. Yes, yes he'll be with you. Yes. God has your back. Yes. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Wherever you might be, aren't you glad yeah. that his word tells you that hell just can't win. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. We wish at this time to extend an invitation on behalf of Almighty God to whoever hears him now calling you. Maybe you've been on the outskirts looking in. Maybe the situation and the circumstances that this whole world now finds itself in, God has used it to draw you nearer and nearer to him. If so, we invite you on behalf of Almighty God to come to the knowledge of what God has already done for you. His son, Jesus Christ, died for you. He died so that you might have a right to the tree of life. He died for you because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so we invite you to accept and to acknowledge what Almighty God has already done. Wherever you are, throughout this country, throughout this world, just say, oh Lord Jesus, I surrender. I surrender all. All to you, my blessed Savior. I surrender. I surrender it all. And if God has brought you to that moment, the most important moment in your life of decision, please feel free to write to us and let us know. And if you want to become a part of this congregation, we welcome you. All you have to do is let us know and we will correspond with you and have you to become a part of the ministry of the Fountain Spring Baptist Church. It's just a portion of God's vineyard. For you see, God has a great big vineyard all over this world. And we're just happy to be called a portion of his vineyard. May God bless you to come. At this time, we'll have our altar call by our assistant pastor, the Reverend Henry Jennings. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege that you've given us today, Lord, to worship and to praise your name. To come together, Lord, to give you the glory that you deserve, Father. It's our prayer, Father, that our worship and our praise of you was acceptable and pleasing in your word. Father, we thank you for the word that you sent us this day, Lord. With so much going on around this world, Father God, we need to hear from you, Lord. And thank you for that word today, Father. No weapon formed against us will prosper, Lord, because heaven and hell can't win. And we thank you, Father God, for our pastor, Lord, for giving him the grace, Lord, to speak on your behalf today. And we hold them up to you, asking you, Lord, to keep them, Father. Continue to keep them. Continue to strengthen them, Lord. And continue to guide them, Lord, in the way that you will have them to go. The way you will have them to lead your people. As we assemble around this altar, Father. No matter where we are, Father. Everywhere that we are, Lord. We bring our problems and we bring our cares to you, Father. Because first of all, we know you care, Lord. We know that you know all about it, Lord, that you had a solution before we had the problem. 
So, Father, we hold it up to you, Father, and ask you, Lord, to look on us as only you can. And in your own perfect time, your own perfect way, Father, come through for us, Lord. It might not come when we want it, Lord. It might not come the way that we need it, Lord. But we know, Father God, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're going to come see about us, Father, because you love us, Lord. Father God, so we leave our problems and we leave our cares at the altar, Father. And we leave light, Lord. We leave with peace. We leave with joy, Father God. And let us walk through this week, Lord, as victorious. As victorious, Lord. And no matter what comes our way, Father, no matter what challenges we face this week, help us to meet it, Lord, in the strength of your Holy Spirit. Once again, we thank you for this day, Lord. And it's our prayer that this upcoming week, Father, you use us in a mighty way, Lord, to spread your gospel, to speak about the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.